Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, I'm going to share eight eco-friendly tips for crocheters. These are some things that I incorporate in my own crocheting, and if you have any you'd like to share that you also do, please share them below in the comments because I'd love to hear them as well. So the first tip I have is to try incorporating reusable elements in your cleaning routine. So when you're tidying up the house or you're wiping things down or cooking in the kitchen, you can incorporate some reusable items uh, for things that maybe you use as disposable items currently. So I do have on the Fiberflux blog and channel a ton of dishcloths and um, some towels and things like that. So instead of using paper towels or things like that, you can uh, replace them with some dishcloths or some towels uh, that are reusable and um, hopefully lighten up the amount of paper that goes into the trash. The second tip that I wanted to share are I save, and I've, I've shared this on the YouTube channel before, but I save all of my yarn clippings, every last one of them, uh, these really tiny little clippings, and I will put them into a large, like, gallon-sized freezer bag, and I'll stuff them full, and then once they get full and I have a project that I need them for, I'll stuff the project with my yarn clippings. So here's an example. Uh, this is a pattern that's been around for a long time. This is actually a knitting pattern. Uh, it's a little throw pillow, and I have other throw pillows on the blog and channel. But this piece, um, I filled completely with yarn clippings. So I saved all my uh, little yarn clippings and stuffed them in there. Now, if you have a pillow that has a more open stitch, like a granny square or something like that, the yarn clippings might spill out. So you might want to create kind of some kind of a sleeve or use a pillow form in that instance. But I use them all the time. You can also use them for... Uh, if you make stuffed animals or if you make uh, like amigurumi, you can use your yarn clippings to stuff in the inside and that way you're not wasting any of them. So on that note, I also wanted to share that when you have larger pieces, when you finish a project and you have like uh, maybe like a little ball of yarn left or a couple yards or something like that, you can use those also to stuff things. But if they're longer, you can also use them. And I'm going to use this pillow as an example again. You can use them to embroider things. So I embroidered some running stitches and some uh, back stitches onto this pillow and also some daisies uh, all over the front of it. Another way you can use long yarn scraps is by creating stripes. So if you have lots of stripes, maybe you could put a stripe of color in there. If you have a little bit more yarn, a couple stripes. But that's a way to kind of go easy on the yarn if you don't really have a lot to work with or if you have lots of yarn, but it's all small amounts of different colors. Another really fun and exciting way you can use up your yarn scraps is a crochet along going on in the Fiberflux world this whole year. And that is the 2019 Stash Down Challenge. So what we've done is we've gathered up all of our yarn that is just kind of sitting around and some of you are using all different colors and it's really, really interesting to look at. Some of you are sticking to a specific palette. Um, this is the one I'm working on. We're making these beautiful squares. You may recognize this square from the Autumn Landscapes Crochet Along, but we're reinterpreting it with all of our scrap yarn. So if you have lots of scrap yarn that you want to use up, now a lot of times we have a, a ball of yarn left over or a couple yards or just so much that we really just don't know what to do with it. It ends up sitting around. Instead of wasting it, you could create one of these stash down projects and you could use the blanket, you could give it away, you could uh, donate it to a charity even. So just another idea for using up your yarn scraps. Okay, the next eco-friendly tip that I wanted to share with you is to repurpose some things. So you can actually make your own yarn. If you've never made your own yarn, it's really, really fun to do. Um, you can make yarn out of t-shirts, and uh, you could go into your closets of your home and create t-shirt yarn. And it's really soft, especially if it's been washed already and worn and you know how t-shirts get like thin and soft when they get older uh, and create your own t-shirt yarn. Now I have a little t-shirt here and when you look for shirts, you wanna make sure there's no side seam. That'll give you a nice continuous strand. I have a full video tutorial and a full photo tutorial, and I'll put the links below if you're interested in making your own t-shirt yarn. It makes a nice kind of bulky yarn, and it's a really sturdy yarn for a variety of projects. Likewise, you can use all of these plastic bags that we end up 
uh, accumulating. Even if you try to use those reusable grocery bags, we sometimes just end up with these grocery bags all the time. Um, you can also make yarn out of that. It's called plarn, so that's short for plastic yarn. So try making yarn out of a variety of items. And I've even seen people um, crochet and knit things with like baker's twine or ribbon or embroidery floss. You can use all different things that you might have on hand. And the idea is to use what you have and reuse things and repurpose things. You can also make yarn out of fabric. And I have a tutorial coming up this summer of uh, making yarn with fabric. So stay tuned for that in a couple of months. Another idea that you can use to kind of repurpose things is when you're finished with a piece, um, now I have just a little small swatch. This was a little example I made in one of my videos and I just made like two rows and it's just kind of sitting around. So you could take a full garment. It doesn't have to be handmade. It could be something store-bought. If you're just tired of it and you, you could either donate it or you could just pull it apart and reuse the yarn. So I've done that a couple of times when I had a swatch and I really, maybe I needed a little snippet of this blue for something else. I've pulled things apart and repurposed them for other projects. So that is always definitely something you can do. Now, if you have a lot of yarn that's just sitting around and you, you haven't used it for your stash down challenge and you haven't used it for stripes or embroidery, you just have like tons of yarn sitting around, try donating your yarn. There are a lot of wonderful organizations that take yarn. I know where I live, my local library accepts yarn for some of their um, creative spaces that they have there. I know that uh, lots of preschools will accept yarn. They do a lot of yarn crafts or uh, make fun things out of yarn. And also um, senior centers, there are always like knit and crochet groups and senior centers. So look around locally and see who needs yarn. Um, some uh, other facilities and shelters and things like that also accept yarn um, for donations or to give people activities um, and, and skills and things like that. So check around locally and also be sure to see if they accept any kind of yarn, do they only accept machine washable yarn? So definitely check on that too as well. But donating yarn is a wonderful way to send your yarn along and allow it to be used and uh, repurposed in another um, way other than sitting around in a, in a closet or a bin or something like that. So try uh, going through your yarn and seeing what you can let go of. Okay, so the next tip has to again do with bags. So we talked a little earlier in the video about those plastic bags that we somehow accumulate. So if you want to reduce the number of bags that you're using, try using reusable bags for your grocery store trips. You could make a produce bag, those meshy kind of bags to put your produce in or a tote bag for when you go shopping and someone asks you if you'd like a bag, you can say, no thank you, I brought my own. So this is uh, just an example, I grabbed one of my own. This is the ColourPop tote. I made it with a yarn cake and this is a great size and those mesh bags really kind of stretch out so you can really fit a lot in there. So try making up a couple of those and keeping them with you. They fold up nicely, you can tuck them away and then when you go shopping, you can just grab one, you keep one, um, in your purse or in your tote bag or your vehicle just so you always have one on hand but the the reusable bags are great to have for when you're shopping or at the library or at the grocery store to bring things home and last but not least my final tip is to um this is kind of departs away from the reduce reuse recycle aspect but uh, one thing I wanted to mention too is to try crocheting for a great cause and you can do this uh, one of many ways. One way is to create finished pieces and sell them and then take the money that you raise and donate it to a cause that really speaks to you, an earthy cause or something that's uh, working on conservation or, or saving things. And um, just as a side note, this is the absolute beginner crochet cow, but you can make pieces, uh, patterns, finished pieces and sell them and redirect your dollars to a cause that uh, really sings to your heart. And also the, the last thing I wanted to share is that they, they're also um, on, along the lines of crocheting for a cause. Uh, be aware of different projects that are going on. So sometimes they'll have big projects where um, you make parts 
and donate them or mail them away and they become part of a large installation. So one, one that comes to mind for me would be the, the hyperbolic crochet re coral reef. That's a mouthful. But uh, that was a, actually a couple years ago. But people made these crocheted coral and then they would send them off and they became part of this traveling art installation to raise awareness and funding and celebrate the beauty but also the danger that the uh, coral reefs are facing. So um, there's lots of public projects you can kind of uh, go on um, the internet and kind of look for what people are doing but a lot of times they uh, raise awareness for a good cause or raise funds and those get redirected into conservation efforts. So I hope you enjoyed my eco-friendly tips for crocheters. I would love to hear all of your ideas and what you're doing to um, celebrate Earth Day this month. Thanks so much for watching and happy crocheting. Bye everyone!